David Johnson coming back to you from Superior Lapidary. Welcome to the channel if you're a first time viewer and welcome back if you've seen some of my other videos. I occasionally put out uh, different videos on lapidary stuff and how to fix uh, equipment and different things like that. Today I am going to go through uh, comprehensively how to make a sphere. And uh, I'll show you what those are in just a second. But basically it's going to be a little tutorial on how you go from this to this in about those 60 to 80 easy steps. Um, it's really not that difficult. A lot of the steps are repetitive and you'll see how that goes. Uh, I have done a previous video on how to make a sphere and I skipped a few steps and overdid a couple other ones. So we're going to try and consolidate that down a little bit and uh, really not skip anything. So we're going to start out with a big stone. We're going to cut it down. We're going to put it in a uh, two different saws and on two different sphere making machines. Uh, one of them you see going behind me is my old trusty slow speed sphere machine. And the one before that is going to be the Highland Park high speed sphere machine, which is quite a, a different beast than the one here. Functionally, you know, they do the exact same thing. There's three motors and they turn round and round and round. And there's grinding cups or polishing cups on the end of those motors and the stone goes in it, in between them. And it uh, either grinds and or polishes them down. Uh, you'll see the drastic difference between the two machines. And you'll see my process for how to make a sphere. There are other methods, there's other tools. They're not vastly different, but there are some nuances. And if you decide to start making spheres one day, you're going to take your own path. You're going to use some of the same equipment other people do. You might make some of your own. You may use it differently. You may use it quicker, you may use it slower. And uh, as those steps come along, I might talk about a few other things. We'll show you a couple other different machines that are available. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So let's get to it. Right now, we're going to head over to the 30 inch rock saw. I'll show you the stone that I'm cutting, and we'll uh, go from there. All right, here we're at the 30 inch Covington saw. It's a little noisy. But I installed a lift to help me open that hood. It's a rather uh, generous hood, weighs quite a bit. Uh, not so much when you're standing, but from a seated position, it is a real pain in the butt. All right, so what I've got here is a piece of Grand Canyon onyx. Uh, it comes from Arizona. It doesn't come out of Grand Canyon. Don't worry about that. We're not taking any uh, federal rocks. I've got a good little supply of this, and this makes some of the most beautiful spheres you're ever going to see. This piece is kind of an odd shape. Uh, it's a little long. It's lumpy. I'm hoping I can make two, possibly two and a small out of this one. Uh, there's going to be a lot of waste, that's sad. But uh, if I get this jigged up in the saw properly, hopefully I can get, get two out of it. We'll see. Or I can just shoot for one bigger one. But the back side is even a little concave. It dishes in a little bit. So that reduces the size of the sphere pretty drastically. But on the onset, you can see the colors on this. Uh, all right, on this 30 inch saw, here's the carriage that holds the stone. Of course, you got the big blade there, that's a 30 inch blade, quite a sizable one. And the stone, we, gotta, we have the stone jigged up in the saw. And uh, one, another thing I'm going to do is we're going to put a stopwatch on this. Boom. We'll call this the starting point. I'm going to see how long it takes to make a sphere. Everybody asks that question, and we'll see how long it takes to make this one. Some actually go quite easy, some take longer. Uh, there's several variables, and we'll, we'll talk about that as time goes on. I haven't really set this up yet. Uh, this 30 inch Covington is kind of nice. It has a little loosener. It's basically a wing nut that holds a split nut either apart or shut. Well, it kind of depends how I can get this jigged up if this is going to be a successful three, three spear rock or not. We'll get one or two out of it for sure, though. So when I loosen that nut, then I can just pull the vice apart. I 
I'm not going to get caught up too much in making it perfect. If I get three out of it, I do. If I only get two, well, that's fine as well. And I think we're going to shoot for two. I think it'll be a lot easier. Let's see if it stays. That is far too loose. So what I may have to do is cut a little, a uh, couple little pieces off of here to get a better bite. We'll definitely have to do that because I don't have enough contact point in the stone here. There's just a little bit touching inside there, and that could spell disaster. I do not want to damage that blade, and you can bend a blade simply by having a rock come loose. So I've got to turn it and cut some little pieces off to get a con better contact area. So I'm going to spin it. Now we can see what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a little, a little pointy part there. So once I get the carriage up snug, tighten the wing nut. Give it some wiggles, lefty tighty, righty loosey. Right hand thread, don't worry about that. You just have to tighten it up in the opposite direction you may think you have to. Now that rock is pretty snug in there. There's another split nut down here. This one actually rides on the drive shaft that runs the carriage forward. So as I squeeze that and loosen the nut, run it up to just about where it's going to start uh, impacting on the stone. One last test I do before I shut the lid and start uh, start cutting. If you're not sure, make sure this, that the blade goes around. Here we go. Good look at the material that we're going to make our sphere out of, as long as everything works well. So there, just cut from there to there, and that was strictly so that when I put this back in the in the carriage, that it, there's enough purchase on here to keep it from sliding around. So righty loosey on this uh, back knob. You're going to find as you do this, you're going to keep a series of wedges and uh, little pieces of wood to do shimming alongside a rock to hold it tight. Uh, one hint I like to use, hockey pucks. Uh, get, a, get a half a dozen hockey pucks, you can cut them into different sizes and shapes. So they can wedge or just take up space this way, that way, whatever. Uh, they compress good, they hold up in the oil. I, just, I love hockey pucks. I think I like the way the rock is in here. 
as far as where I'm going to make the cut. So I'll get a sphere out of this side, maybe that's what I'm going to work on. And I'll certainly get one out of the other side. Maybe one and a tiny one. We'll just have to see how it turns out. I'm going to go back to the big carriage tighten nut. Lefty tighten. Give it a wiggle and a shake. It seems pretty snug in there. But I'm not just going to cut it where it's at. I'm going to take advantage of having this clamped up with a lot of overhang to make two cuts in it. And I'll show you why in a little bit. So I'm going to make a cut here on the end, and then I'll make the cut much closer to the carriage than that. All right. So right now I've got the saw lined up quite a ways into the rock. I'm actually going to take it out and cut just a little strip off this end first. Uh, you'll see why shortly. is still snug. I got it tightened up in there. I'm going to slide it forward until it contacts the blade and back just a hair. Eyeball it up, make sure it cuts off what I need it to. Got to shut the lid. And we'll fire it up and make our second cut. down. You never want to open up the hood while the saw is going. You will catch an oil bath. Make sure it is 100% stopped. Alright, there we go. Cut through one little end of it. thing you can do to get the most out of your rock is do some measuring with it. That would be about center there. I'll just take my uh, little finders there. size now and uh, get, to, get to do some spearing. And in the meantime, I will, I will take the piece that's in here and I'm going to turn it and uh, get that one ready to cut and see if I can get one or two more spears out of it. Alright, there we've got the, uh, the cut piece out of some beautiful stuff again. There's a couple little pock marks in there. This stuff is known to have that. It's not a problem. And here's the piece. Oh yeah, we can certainly make uh, make two spheres out of that, I think. Maybe. Let's see. We'll turn it around, maybe uh, trim this other side off. inch saw. So now we're going to move down to the 18 inch saw. This is my 18 inch 8 Highland Park with the plexiglass hood. Uh, I've got a stone in here right now. I just finished that, that one up. So I'm making room for the, uh, the new one. So 
So ultimately, this is the shape of the stone that we want to get out of this saw. This particular piece is called Northern Lights. It's from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, when I'm done, hopefully we're going to have some uh, copper popping through. You can see some copper right there. Hopefully that's picking up. But uh, this is a beautiful piece. They're, always, they're green and white, and the copper that comes out is just extraordinary. So that's the one I'm working on now. What you guys are waiting for is to see what we can make out of this one. This is a piece of that Grand Canyon onyx that came out of a 30 inch saw. Now I gotta get it in this one. I'll introduce you to the, uh, the sphere jig. This is the neatest little wonder. Uh, it's an indexed jig, so there's 12 holes around here. I'll show you how that works after. And it's a clamp. And this goes inside of the vise of my rock saw. That just clamps it in. Now previously on the 30 inch saw, you saw me make the two parallel cuts in this. And this is why I needed those two parallel cuts. Right there, and right there. Because this jig really likes to have rocks with parallel sides in them. Because there's not a lot of surface area holding it. I like to get it as centered as much as possible so I get the biggest sphere I can. Now this side might be more on my waist side of the rock. I probably could have cut this off a little further, but that's okay. Um, it's bigger over here. So you got a picture, there's a ball in here. And I've got to get as much out of this as possible because, you know, bigger's better. I'm moving my carriage that way right now so that I get as much out of this as I can. I probably won't be able to spin this rock around. I'm going to have to do a little trimming on it. because it is too big. There, it doesn't spin that way, and it won't spin that way. So this is only the first step, and it's going to take several cuts to even get this thing centered. I'm going to slide it up to the blade. That looks pretty good. We'll try that and see where I go. Make sure it's snug. It is. You touch the blade, bring it back. I've got an auto stop on here. This is the same that's on the big saw, basically. There's a few differences. But as this carriage goes forward, that way, there's a chain that's hooked to the carriage, and it goes with it. This chain actually pulls on the uh, electrical switch to stop the motor. You can see there's a wire that goes through here. I can't turn it on now because I get full of oil, but it's hooked. To either the other side of this wire here, and this wire is hooked to the switch. So I've got the carriage locked in. Bolt tighten up there. We can get to that real soon. I do have to shut the hood and start the saw. Right now I'm going to give a quick shout out to SphereProducts.com. That's where I got this Sphere jig. Uh, so go to their page, SphereProducts.com. Go to the lower left where it says Slab Grabber and Sphere Indexing. Click on that one and that will bring you to the page where they have the Sphere Indexing machine. And then of course while you're there, take a look at all the other products they have. Uh, it's a pretty nice little company and they've done good, uh, good work for me.
I appreciate them very much. Spearproducts.com. All right, we're not going to belabor the point. I just want to make, make it clear what we need to do is have the rock just small enough so that it clears the bottom side of the jig under here. That's real critical. They're still, still hitting on one corner. Yeah, just one corner, so you got one little corner to cut off. It won't show everything, but uh, right, we'll cut that out. All right, so I've got this rock cut down just enough so it clears the jig itself. That's one big important step. Now, ultimately, I probably could have cut this down a little bit more. It's only so wide here. But anyway, the point of that first series of steps is getting your rock one, two parallel cuts so it stays in your jig nicely, and two, making sure it spins in the jig. I'm trying to make the biggest sphere out of this I possibly can, so that's why I'm being a little bit finicky about it. There's a concave side to this one, which is kind of, it's kind of strange, but I think I can move the rock over a little in that direction. I'm just eyeballing it, trying to find the center of this stone. on the carriage till now I gotta cut actually quite deep into here because the center of this stone when you picture it as a ball you're not looking at this highest point here you're looking back a little ways right here about is the center of that ball so I've got to get rid of the material on the other side of it so I'm gonna line the blade up with the tip of my finger just by eye get fairly close And as I turn it around, I just watch the blade and make sure there's no divots that it won't get into. This one here isn't too much of a problem because the center of the stone is over here. When I get to this side, man, this thing is just a crooked stone. If, had I cut these parallel sides a little bit more of an angle that way and that way, I might have been able to salvage some more of this. Um, but as it is, Right about here is somewhere around that center of the stone, so I've got to get the blade to that point. At least halfway to that point now, because I can still move the rock over. Okay, it will. side still looks good. Now that I've moved it, it's actually interfering again, but I'm not going to worry about that. Oh, I'll figure that out. Right there. We're looking at about the center point of the stone, and these divots don't go back too bad. Better get just a hair closer. Okay, I think that's going to do. It's 
So now I secure the jig, make sure the rock is snug in there so it doesn't move. Alright, this is going to get considerably smaller than it is right now. That kind of a sad thing, just the shape of the rock is dictating that. Um, had this been a little convex instead of concave, we'd have had a much, much better stone here. But this is still going to turn out to be a dynamite little sphere, I think. So now I've got to make a series of 12 cuts all the way around, and we'll show you that when I'm done. Alright, there's what we got. We got a nice, pretty good surface here. It starts going in here, not a big deal because I think my center is still going to be about here on this stone. It's still hitting on the one side, so that's the side we're going to take off next. Alright, I've got 11 cuts in here, starting here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, and i got one more piece to cut off here. And that will give us a, more of a cylindrical shape, not necessarily a round piece yet, but more of a cylinder with uh, faceted sides on it. Alright, well we've made Hopefully a nice little cylinder shape out of this. So as we spin this around you can see the shape of it. So that's the first step. I cut it pretty close here. I probably should have taken this a little bit smaller. But even if I have some blemishes that show up, uh, this is a fairly soft material. I can probably work on that in a later step. You can see where it gets a little tight spinning sometimes. These two cuts aren't quite parallel and that's what causes that. They're pretty close. So now what I've got to do is I've got to flip this on the jig. Cardboard just so I can lay my arm down on something without getting totally greasy. really got to reach to do this. So anyway, there's the uh, shape of it. I look and see if I see any fractures on one end or the other or a shape that's too cut off too much, then I got to shade the rock the, the other way a little bit. I'd like to move it that way as much as possible and cut off this end because it's a little long. So I do have a little room to still center this. So I think we'll cut off this end of it. Either way, she should look pretty nice when it's done. But that's quite a ways away yet. Uh, I've got somewhere between 20 to 25 minutes per cut here. There's 12 cuts around, plus the two end cuts, plus another couple cuts. Uh, so you can see it's quite a time intensive thing. Not that I have to totally babysit it, but you, you also can't just walk away from it either. Uh, if you walk away and leave it, your saw might bind up, the rock could come loose, uh, you could slip a belt, I mean all sorts of things could happen. And if you're not here, that's just, it's just asking for troubles that you don't want. And I've done that in the past, I've walked away from my saws when they're cutting, and I've regretted it more than a few times. So those are just lessons to learn. So now I've got to get this thing centered on here. You can see I got to center it up and down and left and right. I'll cut off a little bit of that. I'll spin it 90 and see how close I am. Pretty close. Got a big chunk to cut off there, so that's no trouble. And this side, something's a little crooked on this.
I'm going to try this again in a different spot. See, if you get too far over, then I'll cut some off. The whole thing will be kind of oblong, and I'll start making something akin to an egg as opposed to a, uh, a sphere. It's going to be a horrible egg. And there I put it too far one direction, so I've got to, I've got to move this in a couple directions. That part's okay. Gotta go to my left. Sometimes I can hit this on the very first try, and that's always a good day. Sometimes I might sit here for easily five minutes trying to get a rock set. And this isn't the only time I have to do this now. Keep in mind, I've got. Okay, we're just touching the blade. Got a lot to cut off there. Touching it a little bit more aggressively than on the other side, but it's within any tolerance I'm going to need. All right, there we have it. Sometimes if they end up even longer than that, and they're in good shape, you can make coasters out of it. You can slice off some nice pieces. This one didn't turn out that way. Okay, that was the first of ten cuts that I have to make. I've got nine left to do. There are two sides. You can see the very top plane surface. I don't have to cut that, nor the very bottom. So I've got nine more cuts to get this into shape before we have to spin the rock in the jig and uh, do another series of eight cuts. I had my 30 inch saw going when I was doing this part and the noise from the saw really overran the audio. What I'm just showing you is after having that stone in the jig in two different positions and then spinning it and cutting it, this is what it looks like. But you can still see in that direction it's basically square. We've got to cut those off for certain. That's That's got to go. So I've got to install this a third time and then do a series of eight cuts. The four sides that I'm showing you right now I don't have to cut anymore, but I do have to cut two cuts off of each of those four corners. So I'm going to install it, do eight cuts, and we'll show you what the result is after that. So you can see what I'm going to do now is get the stone centered on the jig again so that all four edges of that stone rub perfectly on the blade. You don't want it offset to one side or the other at all because that's going to give you that egg shape you don't want to use. Now you can look at the square shape of that stone again. There's one side of the square and then the top is another side. Each of the four corners of that square I'm going to put two cuts into. And then uh, when I am done with that we'll come back and show you the results of that. So that's the angle of the first cut. The second one will be uh, just a, turned a little bit and it'll cut it again. All right, I'll show you those faces once. I showed you that big pointy side. I cut one off. Turn it again. And now there will be a cut right across this little face. Right through here. You can see it better looking at the cuts above here and here. When we're done with this cut, then you get to see the whole shape of the thing, and then I'll explain better how to cut the next four rounds of it. So I finished making the last cut of the eight cuts in that series, and now I'm going to take the stone out of the jig, I'll show it to you, and I'll describe the next four series of cuts before I go ahead and do them. And then we'll jig it back up and uh, start the saw.
All right, there is that cut here. That was the one previously I showed you. There's no cut here. So let me lift it straight up, and I'll turn it to one cut to this face from the square one to the first cut. And that will go in there. I'll make a series of eight cuts again, two per corner. When I get done, I'll lift it back up. I will spin it exactly one notch and make another series of eight cuts. When I get done with that one, I will spin it one, two places, make a series of eight cuts, spin it one notch, and then make another series of eight cuts. So right now what I have to do is jig this thing up, maybe I'll show you it a little bit. It's dripping some oil. But you can see these, these flat spots, they're square. A lot of people will stop at this point and they'll go right to the hand grinder. And honestly, this material is pretty soft, not a horrible idea, but I just tie her out on the hand grinder. So I've got to be a little more uh, judicious of, with what I do with physical labor. So again, I, I set it in there, I get down low, I eye along this cut to the blade. It's getting, close as I can, left or right. The up or down, I estimate as good as I can. Every once in a while when you hit that right on, you will think you are a king. But it doesn't happen too often. Yeah, I gotta go further to the left. I'm not even gonna check the up and down yet until I get this closer. All in all, it took about three minutes to reset the rock in here to get it lined up for the next series of cuts. Wasn't too bad. There we go. Alright, I think we're there. So now, here's the side we're not going to cut. I'll spin it one notch. We're not going to bore you showing you 32 more cuts and three more resets of the stone. When I come back in this next little segment, we're going to go right to the grinding wheel and uh, show you what the hand grinding process is. And that might show you why I make so many cuts versus others who make fewer. That's my choice, but you can do what you'd like. If you want to save a few dollars on your sphere jig, uh, the blue one I have is over a couple hundred. But you can purchase this for a considerable amount less. This goes into your vise and is clamped down onto the bottom of your vise uh, using some vise grips or something like that. And it uh, and then your rock just sits in there. But you have to cut a cube first. That's the uh, caveat to that one. All right, we're at the grinding wheel. I got a 60 grit uh, 8 inch wheel here. Works pretty good on my old lower tone uh, machine here. So I got a water feed. I'll show you that real quick. Simple uh, jug, I put a little fitting on the bottom. Just got a little valve here to open up. I'll film the whole process. We're going to speed it up uh, quite a bit and we'll turn the volume down because this is a noisy process. But basically, I just got to get all these uh, humps off and get it as round as I can. The rounder, the better. There's also a rough spot here. And I tried to make this as big as I could, and I probably should have shrunk it down a little bit. But I'm not going to worry about getting this perfect on this hand grinder. I'll true this up in the uh, sphere machine. You say it's a fairly soft material, so it'll true up pretty easily. So, here we go. Got a little water drip coming off of here. You never want to run rock stuff dry. This Grand Canyon Onyx smooths out fairly quick, so there the tip is gone, but it's still a little, little fat there. 
The grinding process by hand took 11 minutes, so we've condensed that down a little bit here. Uh, harder stones are going to take longer, 15, maybe even 20 minutes for some of them for this size stone. I find that it's well worth it. It uh, works out a lot better in the sphere machine. It saves a lot of time on the sphere machine and wear, which uh, is something to consider. Fingers will feel these well before my eyes ever pick them up. Now this, the next step from here is going to be to the high-speed sphere machine. And that's a pretty aggressive animal. And it can take off a lot of material uh, if used properly. But you still want to get all the humps and bumps off. It just makes, makes it much easier. But I think all these high spots I've got here, uh, it's going to make some noise in there right away. But then once the wheel starts truing up, it'll get quieter and quieter. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to try the uh, high-speed sphere machine. So this is a high-speed sphere machine. It's a three-headed machine for making spheres. Once you get it to the point that I got this stone. There's a variety of different size cups. Uh, I forget what size I have in there now, but I got some up against the wall there. I ran into a little bit of trouble with this machine. Uh, when I got home and started working out of the shop and out of the hospital, I wanted to get back and use the machine. It's, it's a dandy machine, but there's a foot pedal down here. That was causing me some grief. That is actually a foot pedal, and it's supposed to ride much closer to the floor, uh, maybe six, eight inches off the floor. Then you step on it, it opens up the motors, lets you put the rock in, and closes it. Well, I can't step anymore, and I was debating on a million different ways to fix it. All I did is I strapped it up a little higher than normal and I added a, a steel rod which is nothing more than a steel rod that I can take out. Right there. So now I can open it by hand more or less. I gotta get fairly close to it and I can push down and I'll show you what happens with the motors here from a different angle. To understand I'm pushing down on this rod and that foot lever. So typically you step down on it and when you do that these motors come back. Uh, so I push down on it with my hands and the bar is long enough and strong enough. I got a little wiggling around to do because it I changed a little bit of the geometry of it. So like the other thing I've got a water jug up there. And you need a, need a constant drip on here. You don't have to soak the thing, just enough to start taking the dust away. I'll turn this on. Um, I don't know what else to say, but keep your fingers clear. The blades are sharp, the bits. Those are diamond embedded uh, segments that are soldered on or brazed on to the cups, and they can be replaced. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Hopefully, the rock doesn't uh, break apart or anything bad happen. This particular sequence took about six minutes from start to nearly the finish here. Uh, once again, take a look at that random pattern that you're seeing, that random orbit. It's not going in a circular fashion. It's not spinning on one axis. It just keeps moving that stone around in all sorts of directions. As I mentioned before, this is a, a softer rock. You can see this mud. I got a pretty good drip going on here. We'll take it out and take a look at it. I've had some harder stones that have taken hours. This one's only been on here for a couple of minutes. Uh, I hope you saw the random orbit that that stone did in there. That's what you want. You don't want it to spin in any one direction. All sorts of bad things can happen when, when you do that. 
see if I can get this up. I took it out and looked at it, and there was a spot there that was a flat spot that needed to come out, so I put it back in the uh, sphere machine here and ran it for almost uh, about seven more minutes. So we'll take a look at it and see if that got that flat spot out. So all total, that's about 13 minutes in the sphere machine, and this is a fairly soft stone. that that got that uh, rough spot out of there now we got to uh, go to my polishing machine uh, you certainly can use this for polishing it's a great idea but I'm just not investing in the cups right now but uh, yeah I've got my old slow speed sphere machine my own antiquer that runs beautifully so I'm gonna so I'm gonna run this on there shine this up a little bit take a look at it and then uh, we'll get going on all right we're going to introduce you to my first sphere machine this thing is a tried and true machine it's uh, it's an older model uh, I don't know it was made in the 60s or 70s these are the old Xerox copy machine motors if you do any uh, research on sphere machines unless you buy a new one you're going to probably run into something using these motors they're getting tougher to come by these days. You're going to pay a hundred bucks a motor if you find them, maybe a hundred and a half. But uh, I bought this machine used. It didn't have any cups or anything with it. And I had no idea how to use it. So it sat in my basement for a couple of years before I finally got around to tinkering with it and trying to build some cups. Uh, the first couple renditions were disasters. They were taken from some advice on the internet. After that, I decided to make my own and it includes um, not only the polishing cups but hard grinding cups too that's a hard diamond raised on bit there so you can grind with this as well uh, since I've got the high speed sphere machine and so far I'm, like I said before I'm using that mostly for grinding I'm using this one for polishing if I invested more money in uh, some pads for the other machine, I could probably uh, polish things up a little quicker, but this still works. Depending upon the stone, and the hardness of it, uh, the different stages of polishing take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. This particular stone, this Grand Canyon Onyx, is, is fairly soft and it's going to grind pretty quick. Right now I've got the 100 grit. 100 grit uh, pads on here. Uh, I replaced the cups, they're not velcroed on or anything, so I've got to screw and unscrew these uh, pipe fittings on with the pads on them. I'll show you those in a second. But first, let's put this in the jig. Uh, and this is adjustable. These heads can move in or out depending upon the size of the stone and the size of the cups you have. The biggest thing is you want as big of a cup as possible without the cups interfering with each other. You don't want them to bite into each other because you'll destroy them pretty quick that way. But as big of a cup as you can put on the stone. Uh, these are two inch pipe fittings. Uh, one inch on one side, two inch on the other. I've made these all myself. I've uh, worked the cups on a metal lathe to get a taper on them. I have another video for that. And if you'd like to see how that's done, uh, take a look up there or down there or wherever it shows up on this there's a water drip system um, just like the other one the other ones I've showed you these are little valves for gardening so go to your garden supply centers of your big box store you can order them online or whatever but they're just a drip valve with a little adjuster on them so they can go from zero to uh, you can pour it right out if you like it doesn't take a lot of water but you would like to keep it wet again don't have any rock dust in the air. Rock dust is very harmful for your lungs and some some of the problems you get you cannot recover from. So uh, these are 105.7 RPM motors direct, but well, they're actually gear driven. I'll flip it on you can see how that looks. 
Now the biggest thing you want when you're polishing it and grinding especially is that random orbit pattern. You want that rock to dance around. If all of a sudden it looks like it's just spinning, then you've got to do something about it. And I can already see a lot of this dust on here. So this 100 grit's grinding it pretty good. Honestly, I think I'm just going to let this one go maybe 15 minutes. And I'm going to set my alarm on that because it's easy for me to get distracted and uh, walk away. There, 15 minutes, and we'll come back and take a look at it. The other steps I might not take uh, take so long on. I might even skip a few. I say this Grand Canyon onyx is fairly soft. And you don't want too big of an accumulation of mud on here either, because then it, it suddenly quits polishing and you're just rubbing mud around. So periodically if that happens, run a little water on it. Okay, I'll show you the cups that I have. That's the next thing we'll take a look at. So first off, here's a couple other spears I've made. These I just finished up a couple days ago. So those you have to go in and take a look at them. To the right, I've got three more that I'm working on right now, and I'm going to run those at the same time. This one on the left, I don't know the, the material, but it's very black and almost oil-like with a beautiful yellow in it. That one's going to be fantastic. Uh, it, it's going to be something I've never seen before, and I'm going to need help identifying. The other two, we've got Northern Lights there, and this, yeah, two stones of Northern Lights. Show better what Northern Lights is. Right up, up there is a, a tiny Northern Lights. It's beautiful. It's got copper in it, and uh, you just can't beat it. So down to the cups that I'm using, and I've got different sized ones. Here's the two-inch row that starts off here with the hard grinding bits. 100 grit goes here. And then there's 200, 300, and 400. Get down to the next row. They're stacked a little different, but I got 500, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, and 3,000. I don't have yet made uh, 10,000 great cups in that size, so hopefully I can get those built before I get to the end of these. So, anyway, stay tuned. I'll bring you back for at least one changing of this, maybe that, and for the last one. Otherwise, Every, the stone is going to go through every one of these bits. Okay, it's time. Alright, so I gave it and the cups a little bath. That's very helpful. Turn this water down for now. So I've got nine links out here. That's what I'm going to try and do for all of these. It's working pretty good. Look at that, it even holds on to. So it looks pretty nice right now, and that's somehow what that is somewhat like the finished product is going to be. But uh, this is going to dry out; it's going to be fairly dull. Probably see it changing already. So this has got several more steps. I'm going to switch out to the 200 cups now. Let me just wipe this off. I don't want to transfer any of that 100 grit dust to my 200 cups. that in there for the time being. These are fairly easy to change. 
And I'm going to do four stones with this, like I mentioned before. That's one of the things, once you get into this, you're going to want to maximize your time. And that's one way you can do it, is by getting a bunch of stones that you can put on the same cups. So you're not changing cups all the time. So here, the yellow ones are my 200 grit. I've got them all marked. The color coding isn't anything special. Uh, I made it up myself. Just had to go buy some different cans of paint is all. But I'll keep it that way forever. It does not match anybody else's system. I like it. It's a fairly good stretch for me to get these cups on and off here, but it ain't, it's, it's doable. I can't complain about it. And before I finish that up, I'll just show you these are the pads that I use. And there, there's all sorts of different makes and models of these things. Some have smaller little tabs on here, some have bigger ones, some have spirally shapes in them. Uh, it doesn't matter a whole lot, but I do like the straight better than the spiral. I do like smaller better than bigger for the smaller cups. For the bigger ones, it doesn't matter so much. They got a Velcro back on them. Uh, this is uh, labeled buff, so that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 grit. So these are the ones I'm going to use to make my new buffing cups. Just put uh, that on. They always have a container to catch the water. Do not put this water down the drain. Do not, do not, do not. It will sit in the trap and it will turn to concrete and pretty soon it's going to fill up your trap and your water will never go down the drain. You'll have to change out your pea trap. I do keep this uh, bungee on here. It's not very tight. It does a little bit of vibra vibration control. It kind of keeps the cups together. There. Okay, there we have it. I'll run this from 200 right up through 3,000 and 10,000 if I get those ready. And then uh, we'll get back to you at that point. See you later. Getting down to the very last stage, I got my 10,000 grit cups on here. I'm going to take out the uh, Northern Lights. Northern Lights I've been working on. I'm actually uh, polishing four stones at the same time. So here's one of them. I'll get the other one in just a second. And we'll put it in and we'll start the process of getting this to a 10,000 grit polish. And then we'll see how it looks after that. I do this for about uh, 15 minutes. Well, there we have it. Uh, the last step in the polishing process, and this sphere is done. We'll take a look at it in just a second. All right, so there you have it. That's the sphere making process from start to finish, selecting a rock, uh, cutting it, putting it in a jig, uh, putting several cuts in it. Uh, I think it's 12, 22 plus 40. It's at least 64 cuts. Realistically, it's closer to 70 uh, to get the starting point and everything so you can get it in the jig. And then uh, at least a dozen steps on the polishing machine. So we're at about 82 simple steps to create a sphere. 
This one's got a couple little bugs in it, the little holes. I hope that shows up. That's a beautiful piece. So, thanks for coming along on this uh, little educational series uh, with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please uh, give a thumbs up, uh, like the video, uh, leave a comment if you wish. A kind comment is always appreciated. Uh, subscribe. I'll be coming out with content on some irregular basis, sometimes sooner than others. So, I hope you enjoyed that. And that is how you make a sphere. Superior Lapidary and Dirt Cleaner Videos, signing off.